Warning, the following material is for mature audiences only. It may be highly offensive to persons who rely on crappy Bibles. Satan, the father of lies, loves a good fabrication, but he can also use the truth to his advantage. He will play the truth against the lie and create <laughs> contradiction. Yes, Satan loves the C word. When someone tries to tell you that the Bible contains contradictions, look them square in the eye the left eye, and say this. You're right. You can say this to them because they've probably never encountered a good Bible translation, only the popular crappy Bible versions that spew forth contradictions, like the King James Version, the New International Version, the New American Standard Version, the English Standard Version, the Living Translation, the Amplified Bible, the Mount's Translation. In this video, I will show you how Satan uses contradictions in crappy Bibles to push the masses away from God and Christ, while at the same time trapping millions into believing false ideas about God and Christ. I will show you how Satan uses contradictions to cause millions upon millions of people to deny one of God and Christ's greatest accomplishments, the salvation of all through the death and resurrection of Jesus. And we'll see how Satan's contradictions in crappy Bibles make God and Jesus actually appear to be stupid and weak. Now, I must admit, no Bible translation is perfect, but we have to keep this in mind. All Bible translations are not created equal. To make sure we're on the same page throughout this video, when I use the word scriptures, I'm referring to God's words to mankind that were written originally in Hebrew and Greek. There are no contradictions in the scriptures. When I use the word Bible, I'm referring to man's translations of God's Hebrew and Greek scriptures. Two of the most popular Bible versions are the King James Version and the New International Version. God's words from the Hebrew and Greek scriptures have been translated into English Bibles in more than 100 versions. The majority of the content, even in crappy Bibles, is true but it's the lies that we must be aware of in those Bible versions. It's like rat poison. The small, deadly part is mixed in with loads of good stuff. The lies in a bad Bible clash with the truth in the same Bible and create the deadly contradiction. I regularly have people commenting on my videos very unhappy that I state that there are lies within popular Bible versions. They just can't believe that any scholar or any translator would get anything wrong. The invitation is open to all to show me in the comments below where and how I am wrong in stating that most popular versions are lying to their readers and that some translators actually do get it wrong. If you prove me wrong, I promise that I will stop saying that most Bibles are lying to their readers. I take Satan's lies and contradictions very seriously, and so should you. Contradicting God's words is a very serious crime. And the worst form of contradiction is based on the lies within these crappy Bibles that claim to be God's words. Acts 13, 45 through 46 from the Concordant Literal New Testament. Yet the Jews, perceiving the throngs, are filled with jealousy, and they contradicted the things spoken by Paul, blaspheming. Being bold, both Paul and Barnabas say, To you first was it necessary that the word of God be spoken. Yet, since, in fact, you are thrusting it away, and are judging yourselves not worthy of Ionian life, lo, we are turning to the nations. The apostles were regularly dealing with people who denied and contradicted their words, which were from God. Here, Paul and Barnabas were speaking the word of God, and these jealous Jews were contradicting the word of God from Paul and Barnabas. Their contradiction was blasphemy. By their contradicting, they were thrusting away the true word of God. And their contradicting unbelief was so bad, it was disqualifying them from Ionian life. Contradicting God is a very serious act. For nearly two decades, I blasphemed God by spouting lies and contradictions about him that I learned in Orthodox Christianity. These lies and contradictions that I was spouting came straight out of the Bibles that I was relying on, the King James Version and the New International Version. Yes, my favorite Bibles were lying to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Are your favorite Bibles lying to you? Paul's aggressive instructions for the elders in the church 
are good for all of us to hear also. Titus 1, 9 through 11. Upholding the faithful word according to the teaching, that he may be able to entreat with sound teaching as well as to expose those who contradict. For many are insubordinate, vain praters and impostors, especially those of the circumcision, who must be gagged, who are subverting whole households, teaching what they must not on behalf of sordid gain. As we uphold the faithful words of God, we will at times need to expose those who contradict. Paul tells us they must be gagged. Many contradictors are impostors, and they are subverting not only whole households, but massive amounts of followers, teaching things that contradict God, to the harm of those who are believing their lies and contradictions. Now it's time to expose those who contradict. Some of the worst offenders are those Bible translators who promote their lies and contradictions as being the holy words of God. I will be exposing the translators of the King James Version. I know they're dead, but their false words written in the early 1600s are still hurting people today. The KJV is truly one of Satan's masterpieces of deception. If you are relying on another version of the Bible, please check it against the following contradictions. Contradiction number one. John 3:17 from the King James Version. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. I'm going to assume that you're a decent person and that you want, with all of your heart, to believe that John 3:17 is true and that Jesus actually did what his Father sent him to do to save the world. And this tremendous verse may spark hope in your heart that Jesus did actually save all. After all, why wouldn't he accomplish this great task his father sent him to do? But then you see Matthew 25, 46, which says, and these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. And you notice that it says some will go away into everlasting punishment. Obviously, if that's the end of them, Jesus didn't save them, even though that was the job his father sent him to do. Can you smell the stench of a contradiction? You see these two verses and you reason in your mind, this is the Bible, the Holy Bible. It says so right on the front cover. It can't be wrong. It's the infallible King James Version, for God's sake. You start to doubt God and Jesus and your own mind. And you know very well that Orthodox Christianity, including your pastor and church, doesn't teach that Jesus actually saved all people. Instead, they mock the very idea, but they sure do talk a lot about everlasting punishment. You wonder, how can I go against all those Christians? I'm just one person, and I'm not a Bible scholar. So you huddle close with the majority and believe the lie that your friends believe, the lie that your church teaches, and you live with the contradiction staring you right in the face, directly out of your own holy Bible. Eventually, your hope for the salvation of all fades away. Satan, he giggles. <laughs> Please don't lose your hope or desire for the salvation of all to be true, because it is. I don't hope that the salvation of all is true. I know it's true, because I know of the love and power of God and Christ for all of humanity. The true Jesus is no failure. He does all things well, and he doesn't sin, which means to miss the mark. So what's the solution to this glaring contradiction that we just looked at? Good translation. John 3, 17 from the Concordant Literal New Testament. For God does not dispatch his son into the world that he should be judging the world, but that the world may be saved through him. And Matthew 25, 46. And these shall be coming away into chastening Eonian, yet the just into life Eonian. I'm assuming you notice the wording is different than the King James Version. John 3, 17 in the Concordant Version is saying generally the same thing as the KJV. God sent his son to save the world. The big difference is in the negative judgment in Matthew, where the King James has these shall go away into everlasting punishment, the concordant version has, these shall be coming away into chastening Eonian. One says the consequence is everlasting, the other says it's Eonian. The word Eonian is from the Greek Ionian. It does not mean everlasting, it describes something that pertains to the aeons, which have a beginning and an end. When both verses are properly translated, there is no contradiction. Those nations that suffer the consequences of chastening Eonian will not suffer forever. All who are in those nations were saved by the death and resurrection of Jesus. They will, in God's time, realize and enjoy their salvation. Jesus didn't fail to save all. He accomplished the mission his Father sent him to accomplish, the salvation of the world.
You see how Satan can completely change your understanding of God and Christ by distorting only one of God's pure words from the scriptures. Now, let's look at another contradiction. Contradiction number two. 1 Timothy 4.10 from the King James Version, We trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. This verse gives rise to great hope for the salvation of all, but it goes beyond hope to establish fact as it tells us this great truth about the living God. He is the Savior of all men. He can't be the Savior of all men if he doesn't actually save all men. God does not take the title, the Savior of all men, in vain. But any hope gained from this verse is quickly dashed just a few pages away in the King James Bible. 2 Thessalonians 1.9 Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power? This is a favorite verse of eternal tormentists and annihilationists. It states that some shall be punished with everlasting destruction. That sucks. Obviously, you could look at 2 Thessalonians 1.9 and reason that God is not the Savior of those people. Enter the contradiction. Can these verses both be true as written here in the KJV? Those who believe both must be true because they are both in the Holy Bible must explain away one verse or the other. Guess which one Orthodox Christianity puts its stamp of approval on? Thus, they deny the truth of 1 Timothy 4.10 and proclaim proudly that the living God is not the Savior of all men. That's the sound of Orthodox Christianity slapping God and Jesus right in the face. Did I mention that contradicting God's words is blasphemy? It still is. But there is a solution to this damaging contradiction. Yeah. Translation. Yeah. First Timothy 4.10 We rely on the living God who is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers and 2 Thessalonians 1.9 Who shall incur the justice of Ionian extermination from the face of the Lord and from the glory of his strength? First Timothy 4.10 here and in the KJV reveal the great truth that the living God is the Savior of all mankind. The massive difference between the KJV and the Concordant Version has to do with the negative judgment in 2 Thessalonians 1.9. The KJV says some shall be punished with everlasting destruction. We read here in the concordant version that some shall incur the justice of Eonian extermination. Neither outcomes are good for those on the receiving end of God's justice, but the KJV states the destruction is everlasting, thus excluding many from being saved by the Savior of all mankind, thus making God not the Savior of all mankind. The lie in the KJV diminishes God tremendously, but the truth that the extermination is Eonian and does come to an end does not diminish the fact that God is the Savior of all. Believe it or not, God can and will judge an individual and save that same individual. He's quite talented. The contradiction vanishes with good translation. No judgment can or will undo the finished work of God in Christ that saved all by Jesus' death and resurrection. It's very great news that the judge of all is also the savior of all. And more great news, Satan can't undo the past. He can't change the death and resurrection of Jesus. And that's what saved all of us, the death and resurrection of Jesus. That's why Satan works so hard through crappy Bibles. He can't change the truth, but he can try to hide it from us behind a wall of lies. Two more contradictions to expose. Contradiction number three. 1 Timothy 2.4 from the KJV God our Savior will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. You see this verse and joy and hope well up inside you. God wills all to be saved and come to know the truth. My God, that is awesome. Then your brother-in-law, who is a good Baptist, a good Republican, and a pretty good dancer, tells you with great confidence, yeah, God wants to save all people, but he doesn't always get what he wants. Read Daniel. You read Daniel 12 2, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Your heart sinks. Another f contradiction. And guess what Orthodox Christianity thinks about this? So you reason, apparently God's will doesn't count for much. 
and you think of all your loved ones, living and dead, who aren't believers. The contradiction crushes you as you wonder to yourself, why can't God do the good that he wants to do? And you say to yourself, that's not much of a God if you ask me. And to add to this contradiction, one day while thumbing through your Bible, you bump into Isaiah 46, 9 through 10, where God makes some very bold statements about himself. Isaiah 46, 9 through 10, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Now you're pissed off and confused. You run through all the contradictions in your mind. God says he wills all to be saved. Daniel tells me many will suffer everlasting consequences. My brother-in-law tells me God doesn't always get what he wants. Then God himself says he will do all of his pleasure. And finally, you say, this is stupid. I give up. I'm done. How many millions of people do you think have been pushed away from God and Christ by the lies and contradictions from crappy Bibles and good Baptists? It's disgusting. Here's the solution. Good good translation. Translation. Good translation. <laughs> yeah. First Timothy 2 4 from the Concordant Version. Our Savior God wills that all mankind be saved and come into a realization of the truth. In Daniel 12 2 from the Concordant Version of the Old Testament. From those sleeping in the soil of the ground, many shall awake, these to Aeonian life, and these to reproach for Aeonian repulsion. First Timothy 2 4 is basically saying the same thing in both the KJV and Concordant Versions. God wills all men to be saved and to know the truth. The problem, again, has to do with the negative judgment of unbelievers. The KJV tells us they will be resurrected to shame and everlasting contempt. The concordant version of the Old Testament tells us they will be resurrected to reproach for Aeonian repulsion. The word from the Hebrew scriptures translated as everlasting and Aeonian is the Hebrew word olam, which corresponds with the Greek ion that we looked at previously. That is why the concordant version translates both olam and ion as eon or eonian. Eonian denotes things that have a beginning and an end. It is not everlasting. The repulsion of these will come to an end and God will obtain his will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will to save all and bring all to the truth. Again, this negative judgment cannot undo the finished work of God and Christ that saved all. The judgment is Aeonian, not everlasting, and all of this harmonizes with Isaiah 46, 9 through 10. Remember the former things from the eon, for I am El, and there is no other Elohim, and no other like me, telling from the beginning the hereafter, and from aforetime what has not yet been done, saying, All my counsel it shall be confirmed, and all my desire shall I do. God will do all of his desire, which includes the salvation of all, and bringing all to the truth. Now let's look at one final damaging, disgusting, despicable contradiction. Contradiction number four. 1 Corinthians 15, 28 in the KJV. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. What a great promise in 1 Corinthians 15, 28, that God may be all in all. This occurs at the end of the Aeonian times. Everything is subjected unto God, including his Son. This is the culmination of God's and Christ's work, which includes the salvation of all. Really, you wonder, will God truly be all in all, meaning everyone who was ever created by him? You think of your departed loved ones. You'll see them again, even the ones who died not believing in Jesus. Then, your buddy stomps on your hope and joy. He reminds you of the unforgivable sin in Mark 3:29. But he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. Your heart sinks as you read Mark 3.29. You begin to sweat as you realize that you may not see your departed loved ones again. Your hope has turned to despair. You see the contradiction immediately. How can God be all in all when some will suffer eternal damnation? The contradiction bothers you for a while. 
You talk to people in your church about it. Nobody can really explain to you how all in all isn't really all in all, not even your pastor. But you notice the contradiction doesn't seem to bother anyone else in your church. You finally just give in to the words of Mark 3.29 and reluctantly believe that somehow all in all doesn't really mean all in all. Orthodoxy has given its stamp of approval to the eternal suffering of some while it denies the big truth that God will be all in all. And since there's safety in numbers, you just keep going along with the crowd. Do you think there's a solution to this damaging contradiction? You know it! The translation! The translation! The translation! The translation! The translation! From the concordant version, 1 Corinthians 15, 28. Now whenever all may be subjected to him, then the Son himself also shall be subjected to him who subjects all to him, that God may be all in all. Mark 3.29 Yet whoever should be blaspheming against the Holy Spirit is having no pardon for the eon, but is liable to the eonian penalty for the sin. 1 Corinthians 15.28 in both the KJV and Concordant versions proclaim the same big truth. God will be all in all. Then again we come to the problem with the negative judgment. The KJV tells us the one who blasphemes the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness, but is in danger of eternal damnation. And again, it's a mistranslation of Ionios. The concordant version translates the Greek correctly here. The blasphemer is having no pardon for the eon, but is liable to the eonian penalty. This in no way prevents God from truly being all in all, meaning every single person he created. The judgment in Mark is very real. And so is the all in all in 1 Corinthians 15. There is no contradiction here. Good translation removes the damaging lie and the confusing contradiction. As we said before, God can judge a person and save that same person. And that is exactly what he does. I strongly encourage you to get out of orthodox Christianity. Trust me, it's doing you much more harm than it is good. Now we only looked at four damaging contradictions within the King James Version. Obviously, there are many more damaging contradictions than this. So be aware, if you continue to use crappy Bible translations, those pages are laced with poison. It's perfectly fine for you and me to question scholars and translators. None of them are infallible, and many of them are translated based on their traditional bias and their doctrinal bias. Many, if not all of them, would stand to lose a great deal if they went against orthodox Christianity. Satan is using these translators and their crappy translations to promote his lies to diminish our God and our Savior. God and Christ have saved all through the death and resurrection of Jesus. God's good, pleasing, and perfect will will be done. You will be with all of your loved ones forever, even those who died not believing in Christ. If you have a question about something I've said, please ask in the comments below. And if you disagree with something I've said, please tell me in the comments below. And please state your reason why you don't agree with me. If this video has helped you, please click the thumbs up button so hopefully this video can get out to more people. And to learn more about the key Greek words Ion and Ionius, I invite you to watch this video next.